Hi everyone. So we are starting our Algebra 2 material. Sorry my my Algebra 2 thing over here looks weird. Um, I had to delete the other one I had and we don't have as many colors using this program as I do on the smart board. So. Alright, pause the video and distribute. Alright, so 2x times 5x is 10x squared minus 22x. Number 2, we get 6x to the 6th plus 15x to the 5th minus 12x to the 4th. So today we're going to be factoring using GCF. So real quick, factoring GCF is literally the opposite of the do down. Instead of multiplying everything out, I'm going to give you something like that. And you have to write it as a distributive property problem. All right, so let's start with what is a factor? A factor is a number or a term that divides into another number or a term. So for example, 8 is a factor of 24, right? There's lots of factors of 24, right? 1 is a factor. 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24 is a factor of 24. So there's lots of factors. All right, so what would be a factor of 48? Write one down. I'm going to write 16 because I bet no one wrote that. A factor of 75? I'm going to go with 25. Again, there are lots of answers. 48 has a lot. 1, <clears throat> 2, 3, 4, 5 doesn't go into 48. 6, 8, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 24, and 48. Those are all the factors of 48. There's a lot. Okay, so what's GCF? Most kids remember what it stands for, and that's greatest common factor. But what is it? It's the greatest number or term that divides into another number or term. So typically, what we do is we have two numbers, and we'll see what's the GCF of the two numbers. Okay. So, for example, what is the GCF of 10 and 15? That's an easy one. Most of you should be able to say 5. Right. What is the GCF of 18 and 48? Now, that one's a little harder. Is it 2? Two? 2, they're both even. So here's how you can check. 18 and 48. I'm going to do this backwards division. If I divide by 2, I'm left with 9 and 24. Does anything go into 9 and 24? It does. 3. Divide again. 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 goes into 24 8 times. So 2 is not the answer. What we do is we're going to take these two numbers on the side and multiply them. 2 times 3 is 6. So there's GCF is 6. <clears throat> and think about it. 6 goes into 18. 6 goes into 48. So this method is really good if you are really unsure. All right, so pause the video, try these. 96 and 50. I think that's just two. Let's see, 96 and 50. That gives us 25 and 48. Yep, that's it. Because the only thing that goes into 25 is five. So two is the answer. Number four is 10. That should have been an easy one. Okay, so now we're getting a little harder. What goes into 10 and 25? So that one's easy, 5. But what would be the GCF of x cubed and x squared? What, how, ma how many x's can divide into both of those? x squared. Think of it this way. If I try to divide x cubed and x squared, if I divide by x squared, right? X, x squared goes into x cubed x times if you divide, and this is 1. So you always want to get down to 1. If we try to divide by x cubed, right, if you try to do x squared divided by x cubed, you're going to get a negative number, and that's sad. We don't want that. 
We don't want x to the negative 1. That's bad. <clears throat> so using that logic, what do you think the answer to number 6 is? Well, 8 and 19. 19 is prime. So it doesn't have a number GCF, so it's 1, and then it's just x squared. And here's the down and dirty trick for this. All you're going to is pick the smaller x. Choose the variable with the least exponent. So if I have 8x to the 5th and 3x to the 7th, it's going to be x to the 5th. I take whichever one is smaller, right? Pick whichever, GC, whichever exponent is smaller, that's your GCF. Pick your smaller exponent. Pick your smaller exponent. If we have 11x and 22x to the third, well, my GCF of 11 and 22 is 11. And then what's smaller, x or x cubed? x. All right, pause the video, try these. <clears throat> All right, so 14 and 28 is 14. And then x to the fifth and x is x. Next one, 4 and 36 is 4. Who's smaller, 3 or 7? 3. So notice the GCF of 4x to the third is 4x to the third. And that happens sometimes, that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to get into the actual do now. That was all just prep for what we're about to do. What does it mean to factor a polynomial? Factoring a polynomial is writing a polynomial as a product of two other polynomials. It can be more than two, um, but for, for our purposes right now, it's just two. So it's writing something as a product or multiplication. It's the reverse of the distributive property, which I said um, when we started the day, the lesson in the do now. All right. <clears throat> so factor using GCF. So we went through GCF because that's what I call this type of factoring. We are factoring using GCF today. So let's start. What is the GCF of 10x to the third and 15x to the fourth? So our GCF is 5x to the third, right? We take the smaller one. So now remember, with distributive property, it's reverse distribu dis distributing. What do we do when we distribute? We multiply. What's the opposite of multiplying? Division. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 10x to the third plus 15x to the fourth, and we're going to divide. What do we get when we divide by that GCF? The first term gives me 2. The second term gives me 3x. Now, it's reverse distributive property. But notice, these are not equations. These are expressions. We want to write it as a distributive property problem. So after we divide, we're then going to put our parentheses and put our GCF on the outside. And that is your final answer. If we distribute, we'll get back to where we started. <clears throat> All right, next one. What would be the GCF of x and x, x squared minus 7x? What do you think the GCF is? Well, so 7 is, uh, there's a 1 here, so it's 1x. So we're going to take x squared minus 7x. We're going to divide by our 1x. That leaves me with x minus 7, parentheses, and put our GCF on the outside. Done. All right, try these on your own. Pause the video. All right, so 14 and 21 is 7, right? 7, and then take our smaller x, x squared, x squared. So that's our GCF. We're going to divide. When we divide, we get 2 plus 3x to the third, parentheses, GCF on the outside. Done. Next one. <clears throat> All right, so what's the GCF of 18 and 36? I'm going to do it wrong. What if I thought it was 9? And then x to the 6th, x to the 6th. 
When I do that, I get 2x minus 4. Now, what do you notice about this? We can actually divide again. So we made a mistake. So what can I divide by? I can divide by 2. x minus 2. So then what do you think is going to go out in, in the front then? Well, we have our 2 that we divided by, and we have our 9x to the 6 that we divided by. That gives us 18x to the 6. So if after you divide, you should check, can I divide again? If you can divide again, you didn't really find the GCF correctly. You found a factor, but not the greatest common factor. All right, last slide. Pause it. See if you can do these on your own. <clears throat> All right, so this one is 6x squared, 6x squared. Divide. I get 8x minus, what's anything divided by itself? 1 parentheses, 6x squared on the outside. And the last one, what is the GCF here? I think it's 4. Pretty sure it's 4. Smaller x is 5. I have 4 quarters, so 25x to the third minus 8. Parentheses, GCF on the outside. That is the first type of factoring method. There's like four or five that we're going to go over this year. This is the first one. All right, so you have a worksheet to do. Have a fabulous day. Email me if you have questions.